I think I need to introduce a scripture to us quickly. Um, come with me quickly. Let's do um, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Um, we will read verse 8. But I would like us to understand the significance of the prophecy in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. The significance of the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 53 is a graphic prophetic picture of the procedure that had to go into play in order to achieve our redemption. So the prophetic aspect, the graphic prophetic picture of that procedure is captured in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And if you, if you read diligently, you will find in that presentation of the prophet, there were three questions. So we normally call them the three questions of redemption. And um, one of the reasons, one of the ways I became sure of the message that I was supposed to preach tonight was because when I walked into this place, the first, the first song that was sung in the praise and worship session was drawn from Isaiah chapter 53. So I knew, okay, okay, all right, all right. It's, a, it's the Lord's will, it's the Lord's will. Because the first question of redemption is who has believed our report? Who has believed it? Is there anyone that has believed the report of God? And the reason why the question was asked, who has believed our report is because the events that were going to take place and, and the things that God was going to do by releasing his son to become that sin sacrifice that will create spiritual currency in terms of measures of grace for us to be able to achieve salvation through faith. So all that which God is doing is a legalistic procedure that creates the grace that can bring salvation. But you see, salvation will not be yours even though the grace is available until you believe. So he says, who has believed? Our report. Then the second question is, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom, and any time the arm of the Lord, the finger of God is used in scripture, it is used to denote the Holy Spirit. So he's saying that there's something of an organic nature that will find expression if you believe in what Jesus accomplished on the cross, the organic reality, the organic dimensions of your faith is going to be something, a reality, that the Holy Spirit alone can furnish. And that's why when you exercise your faith in that which Jesus has done, the resultant effect is that you qualify to become a recipient of the Holy Spirit, a measure of his spirit in your own human spirit. And that is the technology behind your regeneration. He said, who has believed our report? Number one. Are you there? Yes. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's number two. And then verse eight is the third question, and that's what the reading is about. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? This third question is talking about the, uh, the fact that at some point, God will need a spokesman. At some point, God will need a mouthpiece. At some point, God will need a vocal cord through which he can communicate his counsel and communicate his will upon the face of the earth. And the reason why there was a vacancy, are you there? Are you there? The reason why there was a vacancy for which there's an advertisement now who shall declare his generation was because he himself was taken from prison. He was taken from judgment. He was cut off from the earth before his time. He became a victim of judgment. He became a victim of justice. So because of that, he needs a vocal call through which he can communicate his mind, he needs a mouthpiece through which his counsel can be revealed. And so the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 1 
reveals the two aspects of the workings of Jesus that is supposed to, there were so many aspects of the workings of Jesus, so many aspects. Are you there? Yeah. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus did all kinds of things. Um, but in order for us to enter into the reality or the possibility of and that aspect of Jesus raising the dead, Jesus healing the sick, it's in the second class, which is the things that Jesus did. All right? So the first requirement is the things that Jesus taught, the things that Jesus said. And we are seeing in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 8 that at some point there will be a need for Jesus to have a vocal cord to communicate his will because he was taken from prison. He was taken from judgment. So there is a vacancy that has been created. And so heaven is saying, who shall declare his generation? So we are looking at the aspect, the aspect of Jesus' operation. The aspect we are looking at is his speaking. All right? Is his speaking. And that's what we want to con concentrate on um, at this time. In order for Jesus to be able to speak through me, through Pastor Pete, through Evangelist Peter, through you, in order for Jesus to speak, there are two things that need to happen. Now that he's not physically present, he can only speak through his spirit. That's the idea of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Everything he does, he will do by his spirit. Okay? So, so in order for him to be able to speak through me, through Pastor Peter, through Pastor Peter, two things must happen. And the first thing that must happen is what we call inspiration. He must inspire you with his, his own thoughts. Are you still with me? He must inspire you with his own thoughts. He must, he must invite you to come to a place where your thoughts and his thoughts synchronize. It's, 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 it's a spiritual invitation for you to come to that, that frequency. You are, you are tuned like a transistor radio to that frequency where you can pick the thoughts of God. So there must be inspiration if God is going to speak through my vessel. There must be inspiration if God is going to speak through your vessel. If God doesn't have a ground to inspire, then his thoughts cannot be captured. And if his thoughts cannot be captured, his words cannot be spoken. So there is a first requirement, which is inspiration. You know, and when I came into the service and, and mommy began to prophesy, I said, She's preaching my message. So I was asking God for him to reduce the prophecy so that I will still have, I will still have something to. <laughs> because that's the example of what I want to teach. Jesus wants to speak. She just gave us the example of what I'm talking about. Jesus wants to speak. And, and you find, you find, there are so many platforms that speak, like the legislative chamber speaks, but it might be impossible to find the perspective of Jesus in that chamber. There are so many things that speak. Uh, so Jesus wants to be able to continue to speak, even though he was taken from prison, he was taken from judgment, he was cut off before his time, but he, need, he wants to speak. So if he's going to speak, the first thing that will happen is called what? Inspiration. In the book of Job, we have, okay, the way the book of Job is arranged, meanwhile, it will interest you to know that the book of Job was written in, the, in a very primitive environment of the revelations of God. Theologically, if we are to arrange the books of the Bible in the order in which they were written, the first book of the Bible would have been the book of Job. I know you know that. So Job was written first. Even though there were revelations that Moses wrote that um, were more into the past than what is written in the book of Job, but in terms of chronology, Job was the first book that was written. Now, if you, if you study the book of Job, you're going to find a very primitive 
you know, theological environment. Uh, and that was because um, of, of the nature of the understanding of the ways of God in those days. Are you there? So the idea of the book of Job is that the philosophy or wisdom is, is captured, is sustained with cardinals. And what I mean by that is this. Um, if Pastor Pete now, Pastor Pete in the whole of, what's the name of the city? Rochester? Yeah. All right. I, I, I just got here yesterday. So. <laughs> so maybe in this city, it, it has been found that he is so wise. So he's given an office of a cardinal. So that any time there's confusion, we need some explanations, a strange event takes place, a strange occurrence finds expression, we come to him to, to get perspective of what has happened. All right? So if you check in the book of Job, Job was that kind of person in the East. So if there was anything like that in all of the East, they'll have to travel to come and meet Job, and then Job will now say, okay, this is how, this is the explanation of this. Do you understand that? Until one of those philosophers was now afflicted. So his colleagues in the other parts of the world had to travel to come interpret, to come explain. <laughs> to come explain the reason behind his problem. So it was in that discussion that you could actually, you could, you, could, you could follow the thread of their worldview, you could follow the thread of their perspective, you could follow the thread of their interpretation. You will see that one of those philosophers, his interpretation of Job's condition was that it was a product of human merit. That means there were some evil things that Job did and what is happening to him right now is a, is, um, is a result of some secret evil things that he has done. So you could see the, the thread of their philosophy, the texture of their philosophy. And in that argument, Job held on to his own righteousness. So Job was operating and debating from the standpoint of self-righteousness. Are you there? Now, at the end of the debate, they were unable to arrive at a conclusion because they could not best Job in the debate. So there was a time of silence. There was a break. It was during the break period that one of the lecturer assistants that accompanied one of the philosophers, you know, there was, there was a young man that accompanied one of the philosophers. Uh, he now said, you know, he, according to tradition, it's supposed to be that years should speak and length of days should teach wisdom. What he, was, what he means by that is that the elderly people are the ones that are customarily supposed to uh, have a say in an issue of trying to decipher the reason why something is happening. But... He said, there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gave them understanding. Job chapter 32 verse 8. There is a spirit. All of them with all of their wisdom, their experience and practice could not come up with the reason why Job was in that condition. And Job himself did not hold an accurate perspective in view of the occurrence that was taking place. Ah, mind you, mind you. Are you there? Are you following me? Yes, yes. Be it known to you that this, at this time, the scriptures were still in the, the cradle. And we had not yet arrived at the New Testament where Paul begins to give us insight into the reason why somebody that can be accurate with God can still suffer. So all of that wisdom and knowledge was not available. So, so you can excuse them. Are you there? Yes. All right, so they could not come to a point of understanding the situation, even though they were experienced, even though they had practiced for a long time. And then Elihu said that there is a spirit in man that beyond your human wisdom, 
beyond your human perspective, beyond your human vista that you have sustained on the account of experience and learning, there is still a spirit that is in man and it is the inspiration that comes from the Almighty that can give us an accurate perspective. So as long as we do not see through the light that God has provided, we are not going to be accurate. Irrespective of our learning, of our experience, of our travels, of the things we have encountered, the only time we can be accurate is when the Spirit of God inspires us and takes us on that journey of inspiration to the point of understanding. So the mind of God cannot be spoken, cannot be accessed until the Spirit of God inspires. If it doesn't inspire, then we'll walk in darkness. Our civilization will be based on that which we have experienced and that which we have studied. And that's going to be a mighty limitation. His, his ways will no longer be upon the face of the earth because he has not inspired any among us. You know, in order for you to preach an accurate sermon that is a dust seer the Lord coming from the heart of God, you must be inspired by the Holy Ghost. Meanwhile, as theologians, we've been trained. We know how to access scripture. We know how to, we are trained to interpret it. But if your interpretation and the good lessons you've drawn from scripture is devoid of the agency of inspiration, yes. you are preaching the Bible. You are preaching, the, explaining the logos. But that is not the present revelation position. Yes. That's the difference. Thank you for tuning in to our channel today. We trust you walk in the light of the sermon that you've received. Please like, share, and leave a comment in the comment section. God bless you.